I'm Dylan Neal. I'm here to present a, on a presentation about Carrier QCA, which is a tool to critically appraise systematic reviews that use a new method of evidence synthesis known as qualitative comparative analysis. I'm based at the Epicenter, and this is a presentation prepared with my colleagues Katie Sepcliffe and James Thomas. And just to declare, I have no actual or potential conflict of interest in relation to this presentation. Um, as you'll see, there's a number of love hats being included in this presentation. Um, and I'd like to start the background um, and to think through the needs for qualitative comparative analysis. Um, systematic reviews have been subject to critique by a number of different um, authors. One example here is a critique by Fiona Cornish, um, who critiqued uh, systematic reviews for complex interventions on the basis of three dimensions. Um, firstly, that they have a restricted definition of evidence. So they've tended in the past to focus on randomized control trials and less so on other study designs. They um, also ignore context and complexity. Um, and they also, in an aspiration to be objective, they also deny the reflexivity and the role of researchers. In her paper, in her critique, um, she concluded that the idea, the very idea that um, systematic reviews can establish whether something works or not um, is uh, particularly tricky. And as the love part here might indicate, we don't necessarily agree with this um, critique, but this is frequently uh, leveled at systematic reviews. And in the case of complex interventions that may differ in context and components that operate, some of these um, review, some of these critiques may be valid if we only stick to um, well-established uh, methods of uh, synthesizing data, for example, meta-analysis. And in particular, what um, complex interventions tend to introduce is a, a notion of um, being context dependent and having emergent outcomes which are tricky to account for within standard meta-analytic frameworks. And we need to be able to communicate some of these messages for decision makers um, in order to influence uh, policy and practice, and we need to understand what the essential elements of an intervention are. So in uh, complex interventions, we've got aspects that make that difficult. So we've got these context-dependent uh, relationships, and we've got these emergent outcomes. So where we've got some characteristics that only work in combination with others, and this is an example of conjunctural causation. Um, and then we've also got different pathways to reach the same outcome. So uh, equifinality and or otherwise known as multiple conjunctural causation. So quite complex relationships um, appearing. And we need to utilize synthesis methods that allow us to understand which co intervention components are essential to trigger successful outcomes. And one method that has recently been employed to meet the challenge of qualitative comparative analysis uh, has been ah, One method that has recently been employed to meet this challenge is qualitative comparative analysis, or QCA. This was first applied within systematic reviews uh, by James Thomas and colleagues. Um, so uh, uh, as the love heart states, I'm teasing you here, and we're going to um, go through and explore a little bit more what QCA involves. So qualitative comparative analysis is a method to address the small number of cases and many variables challenge that is um, often encountered within systematic reviewing. It sits between um, almost a quantitative and qualitative framework. It features the best um, aspects of case-based analysis where we've got the, developing this deep um, case-based knowledge and also the uh, variable based approaches where we're looking for patterns and recurring patterns across different cases. Um, it's reliant on set theory so we're thinking about different outcome sets so an, an outcome set of successful interventions and then also thinking about um, the properties of conditions and um, thinking about condition sets or characteristics of an intervention. 
And two of the main um, relationships we're looking to uncover within QCA are necessary and sufficient relationships. So in necessary relationships, the condition is always there when we observe the outcome. So it's necessary to trigger the outcome, but other aspects may also be needed and not all necessary relation, not all necessary conditions will um, trigger an outcome in isolation. In terms of a sufficient relationship, the, when we see the occurrence of this condition or this particular intervention characteristic, we know that the, the outcome is going to be triggered. So we know that, for example, the intervention will be successful, but we also recognise that there may be other pathways to reach that um, outcome or that successful intervention. So in particular within systematic reviews, we're interested in identifying some of these sufficient relationships and building up complex causal uh, relationships. So we're trying to find these complex recipes that trigger successful interventions. Um, so CARI QCA um, is a tool for trying to understand and appraise the quality of reviews using QCA. So the number of um, systematic reviews that draw on QCA as a synthesis method is increasing over time. So the method has only been applied within systematic reviews from 2013 onwards, um, and we're seeing a, a substantial rise in the past um, couple of years of reviews that are using QCA as a synthesis method. And this tool is really about trying to ensure that QCA is conducted properly, um, robustly, and that we can have confidence in the results of a QCA. So we're learning to love QCA, if you like, with a tool that, um, around critical appraisal of reviews using QCA. Um, and just to explain how we went about developing this uh, tool. so. First off, we went through and we determined what the critical issues were around um, ensuring quality in QCA. And we wanted to ensure as well that the nature of QCA was reflected in the tool. So in particular, we wanted to think through what the essential stages were in conducting QCA and made sure that these were structured, the tool was structured around these different stages. We wanted to also to ensure that it had a user-friendly structure, so we looked at the way that other quality tools were measured uh, and were um, designed and um, wanted to model our tool on some of these more user-friendly um, quality assessment tools. We've also invited comments from uh, experts in QCA, but also other researchers who may not be as familiar with QCA and we're testing the tool on different reviews that have used QCA and that testing is underway at the moment. And just the core features of the tool, so QCA um, follows six defined stages, so the tool follows these stages plus incorporates an additional stage around setting up the review. Um, for each stage, users of the tool, users of CARI QCA are asked to consider um, three aspects. So they are to consider the use of theory, which underpins all QCA analyses, the technical conduct, so whether the stage has been conducted appropriately, and also whether the, um, the analysis is reported correctly, so reporting standards. Um, and uh, so QCA has um, is a complex uh, process and a um, multi complex and multi-stage process and this is reflected in the design of the tool so we've got our six stages plus our stage zero if you like around setting up the QCA how um, how that's uh, been designed from the outset and for each of these stages we've got a question a number of questions that, um, that we want reviewers to consider so for example we're going to hone in on uh, stage zero, so the setting up of QCA. And this aspect of the tool considered how well the ambitions of the overall systematic review fit in with the potential opportunities offered by QCA. And it considers five overarching questions. Um, so whether QCA is appropriate for addressing the review question, if there's a sound theoretical basis underpinning the QCA, if the use of QCA is pre-planned and used appropriately with other review methods, which is a preferred method of um, employing QCA within a systematic review, 
um, whether the selection of cases or studies that fall into a QCA is appropriate, and whether the authors have developed a deep knowledge of the included um, studies. And within each of these questions, as I mentioned before, users are invited to consider the use of theory, technical conduct and reporting standards through a series of prompting questions. Um, and they're invited to identify whether um, the, the, Q, um, the QCA, whether there are concerns for each of these questions and to use these judgments to consider whether there are concerns regarding the setting up of QCA and to think through the rationale for these concerns as well. So I'm just going to show a little bit of what the tool actually looks like um, and this is focusing in on one of those questions within this uh, larger domain of setting up the QCA. So this is considering whether um, the authors have developed a deep knowledge of the included studies in QCA. And as you can see on the right hand um, side, we've got a, um, a scale, if you like, from yes, probably yes, probably no, no and no information um, available for reviewers to select. Um, and for each of the aspects of um, the reporting tool, so the technical conduct, use of theory, reporting standard, there is a number of prompts. So, for example, um, if we're looking at the use of theory, we're looking, um, we're prompting reviewers to consider have the authors related the case knowledge to the underpinning theory. And then for each of these overall domains and the, for the overall stages of QCA, we're asking reviewers to report whether there are concerns setting up the QCA and whether these are, um, whether the, there is a low risk of bias, a low level of concerns or a high level of concerns, or whether there is, uh, it's not quite clear. Um, and we also ask reviewers to provide the rationale for these concerns. Um, and we do this for each of the broader domains, so stage zero and the six uh, main stages of actually conducting the process of conducting QCA. Um, each of the concerns, um, we would get a rating from low, medium or high concerns and then we have this overarching um, assessment as well. So we're asking reviewers to consider based on the above um, domains whether uh, the QCA findings are reliable and whether we think that there's high, medium or low confidence in those um, findings. Um, in practice, so using QCA, QCA is a complex iterative and multi-stage process and the Carried QCA tool is a comprehensive assessment of these different stages. As it stands, Carried QCA includes 20 main questions for reviewers to uh, consider. And for each of these questions, there are three elements so the, um, the theory, the technical conduct, and the reporting standards that reviewers are invited to consider. So in total, there's 60 aspects to consider, and we're aware that there is a, that is a large number. At the moment, we're testing the tool across different reviews, but the number of potential reviews we can test the tool on is relatively modest still. We think that there's under 20 systematic reviews that you, um, draw on QCA as a synthesis method at the moment. But as the evidence base grows, we can potentially use further and more multivariate techniques to reduce the number of items potentially. So looking at the overlap between some of these items and so we may see a kind of a smaller QCA tool in future. So aspects of the tool that we're currently thinking about refining include the length of time it takes to complete the tool through potentially rationalizing some of the um, questions under consideration. And also we are considering how to present the findings. The findings and um, the tool itself lends itself well to a traditional risk of bias chart for presenting the findings across the different stages of QCA. Um, in conclusion, uh, the tool itself um, is dual purpose in a way. It serves as both a set of good practice principles on how to conduct QCA for reviewers who are just setting out to undertake QCA, and in particular, the accompanying paper um, that we are submitting um, is uh, a really useful guide for people setting out to uh, who are new to the field and who are undertaking QCA perhaps for the first time. But its main function, its most important function, is also as a way of assessing the quality of QCA conducted by systematic reviewers. So it's a tool for evidence users 
and to think through how much confidence they can have in the findings from a QCA. Um, as I've mentioned, the accompanying paper summarises the underlying rationale for each stage and the potential considerations that reviewers need to, um, to need to have accounted for. And more testing, we think, will illuminate where systematic reviewers need to focus their efforts more. So um, as we have more reviews um, that uh, use QCA, there's potential to further understand the challenges of adopting a QCA approach and where we need to strengthen practice. Um, and just the final slide, so um, you, there have been a lot of love hats during uh, this presentation, which will make total sense uh, because um, QCA is an emerging method for better understanding how interventions work or not. Um, and we can start to develop complex causal recipes of how interventions affect the change on outcomes. Um, it carry QCA aids this process because it provides a transparent and standardised approach for critiquing and evaluating reviews using QCA. And the use of the tool is intended to build confidence among evidence users who are encountering QCA um, perhaps for the first time. Um, so uh, the acronym CARI also means love in Welsh. So in the future, we may all be able to say Red Green Carry QCA or I love QCA uh, in future. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Um, if you'd like to tweet us, uh, our tweets are there and um, uh, we hope to, that you find this tool useful in your work. Thank you.